Hello, my name is Bob Pickard. I'm the president of Edelman Japan, and I'm the host of ITB Japan's advertising and marketing program. Today we're joined by Mr. Simon Sproul, who's the corporate vice president of global communications at Nissan. Simon, welcome to the program. Thank you. Good to be here. Please tell me these days, what's it like to be Carlos Ghosn's senior communications advisor? Um, busy. Um, I think uh, whenever anyone in any senior communication position is juggling. Uh, a, a, an enormous number of um, demands, both internally and, and externally. So your 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 first job is obviously to to shape the communication strategy for the company. Mm -hmm. uh, you're also responsible to the CEO and looking after his communication activities as well. So you've got a corporation and you've got an individual, and then you've got all the myriad stakeholders that you've got to connect with. So you know if if, if you sum it if you sum it up, it's no day is anything like. The, 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 the last you mm. you know you wake up in the morning and the news cycle often dictates your your day which is good I mean mm -hmm. that's the that's the environment that we all like to live in um, and it's a matter of I think uh, particularly with, with, a, with a global job of m managing all the different you know demands and, and, the, and the different news cycles and the different information that's flowing in and out of the, of the office and in many ways I think a global communication department and my role as, as 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 head of that function is like a sort of air traffic control office. Mm -hmm. You know, Nissan has a lot of stories up in the air, and I guess my job is to make sure they land in sequence without crashing into each other. Now you report directly to Mr. Gohan, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah. Now that's a very unusual reporting line because most corporate communicators do not report to the senior guy, but you do. That must have some positive impact in terms of your effectiveness doing your job. I think any time you any any time you have a direct line to to, to the CEO is is, is good for, for communications because you, you you're you're getting the first hand account of, of, of what the CEO wants to, to, to do in terms of driving the business. Um, you have an opportunity to get a seat at the table when decisions are made yes. and you can input there the, the, the voice of the stakeholder. Mm -hmm. So in many ways my, my role is to, to, to say you know, through the business planning process if we do X or Y mm -hmm. you know, stakeholders are going to react in the following way. Now you know, the corporation has a number of different Competing demands. Any organisation does, and it's a matter of balancing those out. So, you know, the job of communications is to, is to act as the advocate mm -hmm. for 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 our stakeholders. That could be the consumer, that could be employees, it could be the media, it could be shareholders, it could be analysts, whoever. And then it's the job of the CEO and the senior leadership team to balance those 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 competing uh, demands. And you know, having the access to the CEO makes that job a lot easier. Uh, I have to say, mm. so so that direct line does make it a lot easier. Now, it makes it, I think, probably more challenging, and the expectations of a department are much higher because it's a direct report function. Right. But at least you have that direct link. Now, Simon, Nissan sells cars mm -hmm. in so many countries. You have so many different models. Mm -hmm. You have so many different stakeholder groups, mm -hmm. investors, employees, mm -hmm. NGOs, no doubt. You're in charge of CSR as well. How, from that business diversity, do you carve out a sort of a master communications vision mm. around the world, a, a global theme, if you will? Mm. Well, you start off with a business plan. I mean, you know, Nissan is driven by a series of, of, of three-year business plans. That's what we've been doing since 1999. And so the business plan is where you start. So there you have the, 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 the corporate objectives, the commitments for, for the three years. So you start off with that as your building blocks. Mm -hmm. And then from there you look at you know, the brand, you look at the vision, you look at the mission of the company, and you start to construct the communication strategy based on that foundation. Right. Now, we, we, I, I would say we, we, we look at it in a kind of matrix. So on, on, on one dimension, you're looking at stakeholders. So you're looking at specific communication strategy, mm -hmm. uh, strategy elements by stakeholder. So you might do one set of things with employees. You might do another set of things with NGOs. And then you're looking at it from a regional basis as well. Now, although the world increasingly is, um, I would say, b becoming more similar rather than divergent in terms of communication themes mm -hmm. because the media and obviously the internet has meant that information flows very quickly and very seamlessly across borders. Um, at the same time, there are re you know Nissan has a different image and has a different role in many different in, 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 in different regions around the world. So mm -hmm. we we look at it from a from a stakeholder perspective. Right. We look at it from a regional perspective as well, based on the foundation of the uh, of the business plan. So these days, what would be the 
global master vision or the universal uh, articulation of the company's uh, brand. Uh, what things are true of Nissan in every country around the world, for example? Well, the, I mean, the, the vision of the company is enriching people's lives. Now, that's a, very, that's a broad statement, mm. okay? So, um, you know, from, that's, that's really just your starting point. Right. Um, for enriching people's lives, you then start to get into, well, actually, how are you enriching people's mm -hmm. lives? So, you know, for example, um, with consumers, our interaction is obviously through our product and our services. Mm -hmm. Now, we have interaction with consumers through um, the communications that come out from the company, but the, actually the first line of, of interaction consumers have is, is through our dealers. So we also have to work with our dealers on how they're communicating and connecting with, uh, with, with, with customers. Right. So you've got, you've got, you've got th that aspect. Then you look at your other stakeholder group and you look at, well, okay, how is the company adding value to an employee's life or suppliers or an NGO? And I think the, the one aspect that's interesting that's come in over the last few years is this notion of sustainability. Hmm. And CSR is a kind of buzzword. Yes. You know, and a lot of people talk about it, and I think not a lot of people truly understand what it means and in truth it means different things for different corporations for us mm -hmm. sustainability is about the interaction of the company with all its stakeholders and ensuring that, that our interactions with our stakeholders are not uh, causing negative effects on those stakeholders and again it's sustainability so we, we want to continue to do business long term with consumers with our suppliers with NGOs, with employees, and so forth. So it's it's mm. it's. I mean, you, when when you're constructing the strategy, you, you you've got to take into account all those uh, all those different factors. Now, Nissan became so famous under Mr. Ghosn mm -hmm. for that remarkable turnaround mm -hmm. in business fortune, and he became the toast of the town here in Tokyo, and and a world famous guy. Um, but that was a few years ago now. How do you, in your position as the communications guy, keep the image? interesting, especially at a time when a lot of the buzz these days is around Toyota because of its uh, looming uh, assumption of the number one role uh, in terms of overall global vehicle sales. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're right. The, the revival story was, was one point in time. Mm -hmm. And you, 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 you get to a point where you don't want the revival story playing in the narrative anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's done. Right. You, you can't be permanently in revival. It's, it's, it's exhausting and confusing for everybody. Mm -hmm. Revival was a fixed point in time, and now it's, for us, it's, it's, it's long-term sustainable growth. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the transition of the story. Now, the job of communications is to, is to enable that transition, because we want to really start to get away from Nissan, the revival company, to Nissan, the growing, sustainable, stable company. Now, we do that through telling our story. Mm -hmm. And I think the, what's interesting in communications now is, is that there are, there, there are two ways in which you communicate. You communicate through news, yes. which is event-driven. Mm -hmm. You know, it's Nissan builds a factory, Nissan launches a car, Nissan does this in, you know, in, in its financial results and so forth. And then you tell the story. And I think it's the storytelling that's now becoming more and more important for, for, for all corporations because it's through stories that you connect with your stakeholders. Right. So I would say our focus is shifting now from not just being a news generating organization, which was really, I think, through the revival, which was, was what was of interest to, to the press because the company was, was recovering. It was doing new things. It was launching new products. It was delivering great financial results and so mm -hmm. forth. Now we're into a point in time where revival is done, sustainable long-term growth is the key, mm -hmm. and for stakeholders to understand Nissan, they need to understand our story 